Hello Aquarius, welcome to your weekly tarot reading. Um, first off, I feel like in your relationship sector, it's uh, things are playing out kind of like a tragedy comedy, okay? One minute things are really, really tragic, and then the next it's like very um, funny, it's hilarious. So I feel like there is a major, major emotional highs and lows that are going to be happening for this week. And this is the energy that you bring to the table. I have here the Nine of Pentacles, and this is uh, usually like a singles card, okay? So I feel like for many of you who are um, not in a coupled relationship, who are single, this is the, the crowd that I'm speaking to. Because this is you doing really well for yourself financially. You're at a place where, you know, money is starting to rack up in your bank account. You're starting to save up. You're not focused on frivolous things. And even if you were to go out, you don't have to watch your spending. You don't have to, you know, look at the, 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 uh, the price tag. You're able to afford everything that you want. And you're at a place of not only financial abundance, but you're very secure and happy being on your own. And the, the trouble is Aquarius people are very, very independent. So it's when you get into a relationship, that's when you kind of uh, feel very rattled and you feel like you're losing your independence. And it makes you very nervous when you feel like you have to plan things with another person. And it makes you feel nervous when you constantly have to one day after another, or, you know, from one day to the next, constantly have to ask you know how do they feel about me did i do anything wrong why are they blowing hot and cold and why are they so confusing so in your world aquarius as a single person everything is neatly compartmentalized everything is predictable and you have great control over it it's when you deal with other people that's when things get very muddled and confusing and that's when it's hard for you to have that sense of control over your emotions the person that you're dealing with is the moon. So the last two weeks, remember, I pulled out the sun for the partner. This time it's the moon. And when it's a major arcana card, it's somebody that is really, um, their, their presence is very powerfully felt in your world. And with this moon card, I feel like you're dealing with someone who is not really sure what they want. Who is one moment very, very stern, and then the next, they're very emotional. They could themselves be very, very um, like uh, sensitive, but they hide it and you only see it at certain times of the day or certain times of the year. So it's like a person who's like deeply emotional, deeply sensitive, but I feel like they might even put on a mask and pretend like they're not, okay? So if you look at the moon, the moon is crying, is looking like he's laughing, but he's got a tear down his eye. So that's what I mean by a tragedy comedy. What you see is not what you get. And this is a person that is deeply, deeply emotional and sensitive. But they put on a face, they could be very crass and vulgar. They put on a front, they put on a facade that they're anything but. So if you're dealing with someone like this, I feel like it's it's important for you to keep in mind that you know everyone to some extent is very sensitive and we have to kind of watch our words and watch what we say and watch our body language when we're around them and with this energy it can be it's somebody who is very confusing okay or at least they're very confusing to be around or they're very confusing towards you the way they behave they might blow hot and cold because i feel like it's linked here with the ace of wands on the one hand the ace of wands there's a lot of passion a lot of chemistry a lot of desire between the two of you it's the central card so the energy definitely flow both ways okay you feel it towards them they feel it towards you but if you look at this hand here, it's almost like I try so many times and each time I get burned. Okay, it's like somebody that harbors a lot of um, a lot of scars from the past. And so I feel like you're dealing with someone and you put in a lot of work in order to keep the flame alive, in order to keep the spark alive. And it just feels to me with the Ten of Wands here. This is a difficult relationship. 
This is a relationship as well where things are just, um, things are messy. Things are difficult. One person is putting in so much of the work. The other person is like lost in their own emotions and not really seeing all the work that the other person's putting in. So I feel like to an extent, you're not seeing one another as you as you are so the other person the other person that you're dealing with might feel like you're insensitive might feel like a lot of the times you're too caught up in your independence in your own life that you're not really nurturing their their emotional needs okay and then you feel that they're too spacey and emotional from one day to the next that you have to do so many things to appease them and it gets really overwhelming and very tiring it's like all the work that i'm putting into this relationship and they're blowing hot and cold and it's just really difficult for me to maintain it it's difficult for me you feel like you could be very isolated and alone and yes the attraction is is really strong and it's there but it can be very tiring and very emotionally taxing for both parties for others of you the person that you're dealing with here i have a fire sign so this is a sagittarius an aries or a leo and um sun moon or rising this is someone on the outside looking in and i feel like you know they might be in a position of power they might be a person with um in a position of authority they might be very athletic very attractive, very good looking, quite flirtatious, but in a way where um, I feel like um, they know who they want to be with. So they might be nice to people that are flirting with them, but they're not flirtatious in a way where they lead people on. So this is a man that know, well, man or woman that knows how to draw boundaries. You know, they can have fun and things like that. But when the other person gets too serious and if their intentions are not the same, they know how to draw the line, draw clear boundaries so that they don't end up leading the other person on. And in a way, this is someone who's very honorable. They say what they mean and they mean what they say. And in a way, it's sort of like, if they're interested in you, they're going to be all about you. So there isn't any, you know, doubt from your end how they feel about you. And I feel like this might be the person that you have a lot of passion for and a lot of chemistry with. And I do sense it coming both ways, but I feel like for whatever reason, there are some blockages in moving this relationship along. Um, and I feel like for a lot of you, it's this sense of not wanting to be in a relationship because you feel like you're losing your independence. And then from this other person's uh, perspective, it feels like this relationship is a lot of work. It feels like this relationship requires a lot of uh, a lot of time and dedication and, and things that they're not ready for. And honestly, the word I'm hearing is they feel like you're too demanding. Okay, Aquarius, they feel like you're too demanding. And you know, you have a lot of things going on for yourself. I feel like, you know, many of you are self-made. You've never had to rely on other people to get where you are right now in life. You're very financially abundant and it affords you, you know, a certain lifestyle. And I feel like the other person as an outsider looking in, everything that you have built for yourself, you've had to do it of your own hard work and dedication and just, you know, perseverance. And it's okay for you to be demanding of other people, of partners. If they're not really living up to your expectations, you're going to cut them free. And so the, as this person is looking in into your life, they almost feel like you might not feel like they're good enough. Or they feel like you might be too demanding because of the lifestyle that you have, okay? Because of the person that you are. You want certain things a certain way. And I feel like they're a little bit more free-flowing, go with the flow, and also understanding of people's um, deficits. They're, they're, they're uh, for, 
forgiving of people that might not be as capable and as competent because this is a person that leads other people. So they're going to see the, the assets and the deficits in, in the people that they lead and they try to come up with the best strategy to utilize these people. And so they understand that some people are not perfect and I feel like they feel like you are demanding perfection and perfection doesn't really exist. So I feel like there's a mismatch in energy between you and another person. On the one hand, there's a great deal of passion and chemistry, but on the other hand, it's like this relationship requires a lot of work. There's so much there there's so much behind the scenes, things that need to get done, things that needs to, you know, move along and things that need to like get established first for this relationship and it feels like a very heavy burden. And so it can, over time, drown out the passion and the chemistry that was there or that, you know, it, it's still there, but it's really hard to make it come alive underneath all this work that's required. For some of you, this might be a situation in the work environment. And I'm going to talk about your work situation in a little bit. It might be something that's coming up that, that might be, you know, blocked because of all the responsibilities that the two of you have from your respective ends and so relationships might be put on the back burner okay um so that is purely for singles i feel like for people in coupled relationship there is still you know passion and chemistry but also a lot of work maintaining a relationship but i feel like you know the reason for being there for for you and your partner to be together in a relationship it's still there and there's a very strong emotional bond here with the moon but there's also this element of lack of trust or confusion when it comes to your partner you might have a partner that is um this moon energy i i feel like more of that cancerian pisces energy so someone who might be a cancer someone who might be a pisces um the moon is traditionally a, a card of Pisces, so they might have that in their sun, moon, or rising. But it's somebody that I feel um, they're not really sure what they want, okay? It's like they're, they're not really sure about their higher goals and aspirations. And they take a really long time to make a move because they're so lost in their emotions and their thoughts. And you might be the one that's carrying the weight of the relationship. And I feel like at one point... You're going to want to drop this because it's unbearable, right? And then at that time, when you do drop it, that's when they morph into a different person and they're willing to, to take on the load, okay? So like the, the minute you pull away, they step up. So once again, Aquarius, last week I mentioned gender role reversal. And I feel a lot of it is not so much gender role. It's more about... Um, being a little bit more receptive so taking a step back so that the partner can step forward and i feel like that's gonna be uh it, it will bode well for you coming into this week okay letting the other person take the initiative so so drop the load don't do it on your own let the other person step up their game and uh come towards you because i feel like with this ace of uh, wands in the middle the energy is very mutual there's strong passion and chemistry but you kind of need to not be the one to you know do all the work let them step up okay other areas of your life i have here the five of cups this is something i want you to be a little bit careful about so this is like um the word i'm getting from this card here is mistakes were made okay so mistakes were made and i feel like for many of you this is in the work front it's not so much in relationships, saying the wrong things. No, I feel it's in the work front. There were things that should have been handled differently or could have been done better or mistakes that were overlooked and then you had to deal with them. So there, every time you had to deal with these things, you beat yourself up over it. Like, why didn't I catch that? How, how could I not have known why did it you know drag on for so long why didn't i look carefully so i feel like all of these things are kind of uh circling in your mind like i, I see a little bit of shame a little bit of uh, not so much guilt because you really didn't know but it's like it's reflecting badly upon your reputation and i feel like you hold yourself in high regards you know you get things done and you get things done accurately but there was a lot of distraction and there were a lot of work that you had to do last week and as a result of it i feel like mistakes were made and so 
don't pine over spilled milk, okay? Move on. Uh, fix those mistakes and move on because what's really available for you this week is amazing. And first of all, we have career success, dreams, aspirations, and being on the right track. It's This is kind of like the nudge from the universe that professionally you are where you need to be. You're going to be uh, quite visible. Everyone will see you in all your full glory and they're going to see what you have to represent. So I feel like, you know, professionally doors are opening up for you. You're putting your name out there. People are seeing you in a very positive light. You are somebody that wants to help people. And I feel like all the, the, the good deeds are coming back around full circle to help you expand in a professional way. Okay. We also have as well. The Ten of Pentacles. So this is building up wealth, building up a very solid foundation for your financial prosperity. So I feel like money is going to start trickling in, or at least many of you are heavily thinking about savings and also um, a professional boost such as, you know, getting a promotion, getting a pay increase, getting a job that is going to um, allow you to, you know, buy property, allow you to be in a professional environment that is where you need to be so it's 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 a very very shiny sparkly type of an energy coming in in your work situation that guarantees you're going to have a lot of success that guarantees you have a lot of people that will be very supportive of you and you have a lot of people that will look not only look up to you but they see the full potential in you and they want to explore that or they want to you know support you in the work that you do so i see a lot of emotional support coming through in the work front you have two people that are showing up here both kings so the king's energy um they're very strategic they're very intelligent they are people that other people come in to consult so you have an earth sign taurus virgo or capricorn this is someone who's really good when it comes to consulting about your career you know what do I need to do? Uh, should I do, you know, should I send out this resume? Can you help me fix my resume? Can I, um, should I take this, this job? Should I pursue this other career? So I feel like you have someone that you can bounce ideas off of. This is an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, Sun, Moon, or Rising. Somebody that leaves little gifts here and there. So I feel like there might be attraction as well. But this is somebody that wants you to do well. And they care about you in a very physical way. They want you to be successful. They want you to, you know, be financially prosperous. And they're not going to stand in your way. And they're going to, going to give you full support in order to perform your jobs to the best of your capabilities so if there were mistakes made in the past think of it as learning lessons you know lessons learn we learn and we move on and then I also have an air sign so this is an Aquarius a Gemini or a Libra and this is someone who's really good when it comes to consulting they know all the office rumors you know people just gravitate towards them and tell them way too many things so they kind of have you know their um it's like hearing things through the grapevines um you know the little birdie told me so it's it's somebody that knows all the office gossip it's somebody that knows like hey there's a position that's going to be opening up soon are you interested and it's somebody that can give you like um tidbits and knowledge so for example if you're applying for a job they're going to tell you hey i know so and so uh, from that job do you want me to kind of like um you can name drop me so i feel like this is someone who has like the um not so much the practical skills but they have the life skills and the connections that can get you where you need to be okay so you have two very solid people that are in the picture here to help you uh, really boost your career and to really help you get where you need to be and so consulting them and reaching out to them it would be in your best interest mainly because they're giving you advice without strings attached because they want you to do well and then on top of that they really trust your skills and your ability to do your work well so they already hold you in high regards um, what I'm also seeing as well is um, I feel like a lot of workplace attraction that's happening and um, I feel like, you know, they're not only just like attracted to you, I feel like they're interested in you because of your professionalism. They're interested in you because of your ability to get things done and to, to see things to fruition. So you don't give up easily, you know. So whatever setbacks there have been in the past, um, 
I feel like it's really important to let bygones be bygones, you know, water under the bridge and just kind of move forward, okay? You're going to be achieving a lot of financial stability. You're also going to be able to make a lot of connections with the people that you work with or the people that you're um, in the work environment with. And as a result of that, I feel like it's really, um, it's really pertinent for you to kind of focus your mind and focus, you know, kind of anchor your energy and be in the present moment so that you can get everything done that you need to, okay? This energy in the work front is in contrast to last week, so I feel like a lot of things are culminating, a lot of things are coming to fruition for you, so keep at it, okay? The relationship sector, I feel like it's a little bit topsy-turvy. There's a lot of responsibilities, so it's kind of a switcheroo from last week. So don't make this your primary focus, okay? It's not a smart way to do things, Aquarius. Focus on your wealth and your prosperity and focus on, you know, being uh, whatever you need to be in your work situation because that's where things are coming to fruition for you. There's a lot of money here. So for those working on a client basis, on a self, for those who are self-employed too, I feel like things are really, really prosperous for you, okay? I'm going to pull out another card for this 10 of wands here. I don't really like to see it. So let me see spiritual advice here for Aquarius. And I have here Page of Cups. The Page of Cups is an offer of love and, and friendship even, okay? So it's sort of like, I feel like you're dealing with someone that you're kind of thinking you know i'll take what i can get if they want to offer me love i'll go with it if they want to offer me friendship i'm okay with that too because you're very stable and secure on your own it's just when you're dealing with someone who's like very confusing to you and who's very difficult to gauge and from one minute to the next he or she is just you know like hot and cold and when that happens, you know, it's best for you to not be caught up in this muddled, confusing energy. Just pull back. And then when you pull back, that's when they're going to come forward. Okay. So I feel like this is an offer and they themselves are a little bit hesitant and a little bit shy. So they're also thinking, you know, I'll take what I can get. If it's friendship, I'll, I'll disguise it as friendship. So they're deeply, deeply afraid of rejection deeply afraid of rejection so they're going to come forward you to you very uh, in a very nonchalant way um and they're gonna you know test the waters a little bit so they're gonna say things like hey you want to go on uh you want to go grab lunch with me you know this saturday and you're like oh is that a date and they'll, they'll they might say like it can be whatever you want it to be or, you know, oh, no, it's not a date. What are you talking about? It's just two friends grabbing lunch and then seeing what happens. So I feel like they're afraid of rejection, but they do want to come forward to you and they do want to make an offer. But it can be very confusing because their energy is a little bit wishy-washy and you don't handle that well. And I feel like you, you have a very low tolerance for that. So keep that in mind as you navigate this energy. And I feel like for many of you, when you're alone and you're prosperous, you know, people don't really bother you. It's just the, the love arena has always been very challenging for Aquarius for some reason. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that, you know, you're very clear cut, but other people might not know what they want to the extent that, you know, they're they're not very clear about their intentions and they make they, they I, I feel like your energy is intimidating and you put them on the defense and so they come in kind of insecure, like kind of wishy-washy and intimidated and, and they're fearful of rejection. Okay, so I hope the reading is helpful, Aquarius. Take care of yourself. I'll be back next week.